quite an honor and a pleasure to have been given this occasion. It's an auspicious occasion. What's that? That's one of my... <laughs> okay, well, we'll leave that. <laughs> but I'm filled, again, I must say, with exuberant joy. This is beyond description. This is an occasion that will last my life and beyond. The things that has been suggested and emulated in many ways, and as Caleb has thought, I dedicated my life to do whatever I can for young people. Without the aid that we may offer, they are lost. It is left up to us to be the people, to have the young people in place. We, my thrust now, I might add for a moment, is working with the foundation at UAPD and wherever to raise money for scholarship. Mm -hmm. In my personal, there are two endowed scholarships with more than a hundred thousand dollars in each. One for my wife and one for me. We established these scholarships with the idea that one would be in mathematics and her error was physical education. Well, you know, when you set out the criteria, it comes with a lot of baggage. <laughs> student must have a certain GPA, he must have a whole lot of things that many won't qualify for. So I began to think about that, that we have a whole lot of students that was just like me, wouldn't qualify for nothing. <laughs> I was given a scholarship for that came to AM and N. I, it's a little nostalgia, but I think it's well worth saying. I had two dollars and nowhere else to get another. My scholarship called for me to milk with another boy. 20 head of cows twice a day by hand. I did that for four years. I got $29 for four years, not a year, for four years. At the time, the president of the institution was named John Brown Watson. That was the full Dr. Lawrence Davis Sr. time. As I stated, at the other occasion that I worked under every president that has been two, every chancellor that has been had at UAPB. So with that thought in mind, I set out to see what kind of money or uh, scholarship aid we could come up with for students that were in dire need, but they wouldn't qualify for anything. So I had some former students like you, Brother Harris, 
out of Camden, you might know Pastor Saul Money. Okay. Well, I talked to him, and he knew uh, some old pastors around, and they began to network. So we came up with what was called the Hartfield Initiative. Our goal was to raise $100,000 for this. So we were told that you have three years, and if you raise $100,000, it will be matched dollar for dollar by the post-secondary education. Well, raising $100,000 wasn't an easy show. But thanks be to God, I was determined. So that meant I had to find a way. I had to go down in my pocket and come up with what was needed. Thanks again, the $100,000 was raised in the three years. Mm -hmm. so I do not know what's in none of the scholarship. I have nothing to do with who receive them. I am just trying to provide the resources. The students apply to financial aid, give their needs, they make the decision on who is awarded that. I just thought I would say this. Uh, I'm not through. I have an additional goal for this venture. And with the Lord, my will, and God be, we will do what is necessary. I'm a young man now, and <laughs> yes. I've had my day. As I told the lady earlier today, I'm 59 years old. So if my arithmetic is right, and if I can live another 41 years, I'll be a hundred old. <laughs> well, I told her. She was upset. You mean you're 59? And I said, that's what I said. <laughs> so uh, I looked at her. She wasn't looking too good. <laughs> I said, well, I'll tell you what. Just reverse the digits. <laughs> and that will be my age. So you do the same thing. Don't deal with the 59. And I believe the Lord will give me these other five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm all right. I got a couple of my kids here with our children, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, that's my support. The latest, my caretaker, okay, this one here. Yeah. She tells me, she doesn't tell me when to get up. She might tell me when to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I enjoy her. We lost our other friend June the 15th of this past year. We had just celebrated our 73rd oh. anniversary. Oh. So I hope you all who are married will reach that milestone. Mm -hmm. Now, young men, <laughs> don't rush at it. And talk about that the lady doesn't love you. I don't believe you read nowhere in the Bible where it said, that the lady loved you. Is that right, brother? 
Harold. Yes, but it said you yes, love her. Yes, and I believe yes, I might add one correctly. Love her as Christ loved the church. <laughs> How did Christ love the church? He gave his life for it. He died. So think about that. And don't talk about loving her that she doesn't love you. Now, ladies, <laughs> I can't let you off the hook. It says, you should. Honor and obey the husband. Yeah, one came to deal with that because that word obey, she ain't gonna do But I gotta, I gotta. Answer for you. Love her. Treat her like you did when you was coding her. When you meet her, give her a kiss. When you get ready to leave, give her the same. Tell them. And I guarantee you. Don't use that word, obey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Be a diplomat. <laughs> if you do that, what is required of you? You got the sweetest thing that God has made. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She'll be obeying, but she won't know. <laughs> Young man have to tell you how to live. Well, Reverend, you know, I've known Reverend a long time. He's a young man, a younger man. <laughs> uh, I appreciate everything you've done here by getting this in motion. When I called you and told well, you called and told me, <laughs> then I decided, well, I need to give you some buyer or whatever. You said, oh, no, I, I got everything I need. <laughs> well, you know, that, that made me kind of fear. Now, he got everything he needs. I got everything. He said he had everything he needs to know about me. You know? That's terrible. <laughs> And a lot of times, I don't know about my <laughs> But anyway, it's all out there. And it's the truth. You know, uh, some of it is not out there. Because, see, believe it or not, I repeated the eighth grade three times, mm -hmm. believe it or not. You know, I tell the student I did that, they say, you couldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. But I did. Mm -hmm. That's right. I walked seven miles one way to school each day, 14 mile round trip. Mm -hmm. The yellow buses in the hall, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, I was valedictorian of my class, whatever that was. <laughs> I remember my oration, a couple of them, today. And that was when I was eighth grade. I don't know how old I was, but. <laughs> <laughs> One was climb the rock and be rugged. The other one was, tonight we lunch, but where shall we anchor? Mm -hmm. 
And I'll say that again. Tonight, we lunch with this particular program. I don't know where you will anchor, Reverend, but you really have one afloat. With that in mind, I will take my seat unless you want to say something. <laughs> I get to talk to my girlfriend, as I refer to her, who is my wife of 73 years. She always would sit near me, kind of give me a little jerk on my coat. She <laughs> said enough for it. <laughs> That's another thing, uh, gentlemen. Now, these days are going to do a lot of bossing. You know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the only lady's gone, but my boss yeah. <laughs> This is our older daughter, and she's probably with some of your own. <laughs> Back to some of the digits of her age is eight. <laughs> you figure that out. <laughs> Digit is six less than the ten digits. <laughs> you know, in mathematics we used to make equations using numbers no. like that. Yeah. So I'm just reminded of that. Okay? So uh, the sum of the digits of this eight, which a unit digit is one less than the ten digit. You